Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to show you how to make elderberry syrup. This is a wonderful natural remedy for colds, flus, and all around immune system support. So I'm going to be showing you how to make elderberry syrup with dried elderberries. This is nice because dried elderberries are easy to find. You can order them online and find them at bulk health food stores and things like that. You can have some on hand any time of the year ready to make some elderberry syrup. So let's jump right into the recipe and get started. First thing that I'm going to be doing is to be adding four cups of filtered water to my pot. I use my Berkey water filter to filter the water that I'm using for this so that it's nice and pure. Next I'm going to be adding one cup of my dried elderberries. To that I'm going to add two tablespoons of ginger. I'm using dried ginger. Next I'm going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of cloves. Then I'm just going to give that a stir to make sure that all of the spices and elderberries are incorporated into the water. And then I'm going to turn the heat on all the way to high and just bring this to a boil. Once it has come to a boil, then I'm just going to reduce the heat to around medium low and then let that simmer for 45 minutes until the water has reduced by about half. I always love making this because it makes the whole entire house smell so amazing. All right, now that the elderberry syrup has been simmering for about 45 minutes, it's reduced by about half. So it's ready to strain and then we're going to add our last ingredient to it. So I'm going to use a metal strainer and strain it right into my glass pitcher here. And I'm just going to take that and pour it right through the strainer. I'm going to go slowly and then once it gets pretty full, I'm going to stop and just kind of stir it around a little bit and press that nice liquid out of the elderberries. After we have it all strained, then we're just going to let it cool so that it's not too hot when we add the honey. We don't want it to be so hot that it destroys the beneficial enzymes and different nutrients that are in the raw honey. Once it has cooled down until it's still a little bit warm, like not too hot to the touch. You want it to be warm so that the honey can mix in well, but you don't want it to be burning hot, just warm. Then we're gonna add the honey. We're gonna be using raw, unfiltered honey. Local honey is best. And we're gonna be adding one cup. What I like to do is to just pour the honey in and watch the side of my measuring cup until it is increased by one cup and that way I have the right amount in and I don't have to pour it into another measuring cup and try to scrape it all out. I just, it's way easier and less dishes. So who doesn't like that? So since I have about two cups in my pitcher, I'm going to put enough honey in to where I come up to three cups. Once that is in there, I'm just going to stir it with a whisk until it is completely incorporated. Once the honey is well mixed in, so that you can tell that it's not still sticky at the bottom anymore, but that it's all distributed throughout the rest of the elderberry liquid, then it's time to put it into a storage container. You can use a regular glass mason jar. I like these flip top bottles because it's um, nice to pour from them versus a mason jar you can pour easily into a spoon for giving doses. So that's what I'm going to use. Whatever you choose, you do want to choose glass just because that is a nice, safe, non-toxic storage option. And then I'm going to add it to my bottle. Use my funnel. Okay, so there it is, and it has this nice flip top lid with a seal, so you can keep it sealed like that. And then you do want to store this in the refrigerator, and then if the honey does settle to the bottom at all, just kind of swirl it around, maybe shake it a bit before measuring out a spoonful, and that way you'll know that it's all evenly distributed before you give doses. I usually 
um, have this stay in the refrigerator for about two or three months. If it goes much longer beyond that, it'll start to mold, but it should be good for about that length of time. The dosage amounts for adults are one tablespoon daily for preventative immune support. And then for more intense support, like if you actually do get sick, you wanna take one tablespoon every two hours. For children, 12 and under, uh, one teaspoon a day is good for maintenance, and then if they get sick, one teaspoon every two hours. Definitely don't give it to babies under one year of age, though, since babies under one should not have honey. Okay, so that is how you make elderberry syrup with dried elderberries. Like I said, it's a wonderful natural remedy to have around for colds and flus and general immune support. It tastes great, so you have no trouble getting kids to take it. Before I finish up, I wanted to go over really quickly some of the great benefits from elderberry syrup. Elderberries themselves have been used traditionally for a very long time for immune support and for treating colds and flus, as well as preventing illness. Elderberries are very rich in antioxidants. They have high amounts of vitamin C and they're anti-inflammatory. And then the spices that we add to it, the ginger, the cinnamon, and cloves are all really great for immune boosting as well. And they have great warming properties that are really good for when you're sick and lots of different beneficial healing properties in themselves. Okay, I have a blog post on my blog, bumblebeeapothecary.com, that has the full written recipe and a printable recipe card. I'll put a link below where you can grab that if you're interested. I will have links below where you can find the elderberries that I use. This is a really good brand of organic elderberries. I'll put a link below where you can find those, as well as the different spices that I use, some good raw unfiltered honey, these flip top bottles, and these wooden measuring spoons too, which are super cute and I get asked about. I'll have links below where you can find all of those things. And also, if you're new here, over on my blog I have a free DIY home remedy recipes ebook. It is an ebook that has recipes for some different herbal salves. There's also an elderberry syrup recipe in there. And if you're interested in grabbing that, well, there will be a link below for that as well. Okay, if you like this video and you enjoyed learning how to make elderberry syrup, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think might want to learn how to make elderberry syrup. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week on traditional health wisdom and living a sustainable DIY lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.